Ania. Ania. Prester John. You know, interested investigation in Prester John number 41. If you ain't got that drop, go get that drop. But yeah, we chilling, man. We chilling, man. We falling back. I know you saw the title. You're like, oh, shit. What, what's, what's happening now, drop? Who's this doctor? Who's this Dr. Tracy such and such, man? Nah, man. It's all love. You know, we keep it classy around here. And this is definitely a, a classy response to, you know, a uh, video. Um, but it's also, you know, a con conglomerate of just uh, coming together of information as well. But, you know, really love the Dr. Tracy. You know what I mean? Uh, you got the title. Love the Dr. Tracy, man. Love to you, Doc. It's all good. It's all good. I'm going to go in a little bit, but it's all good. Because, you know, you are, you know, promoting, you know what I'm saying, some form of the drop. But it also seems like you are defending. And we're going to get to this defense. And I want to see what the position is. And we're going to get to what the purpose is. See, for us, it's not just information. When we talk about history... We're not talking about, um, you know, some some two-dimensional version of it that we're learning in public school. You know, we're not doctors and such and such. You know, we're not we're not the scholastic scholars of the of the universities. The frequency we are on is an ancient love song. So it's coming out of Drop Nation, and uh, I know you featured a video from 2016. Because Drive Nation been putting in that work. We've been digging on it. We've been building up our resources, our community, to come together in order to put the investigation together. So when we talk about King James, we're not spitballing. We're not pointing the finger and this and this. We're coming at it as the indigenous, autochthonous, aboriginal, indigenous, original, copper color naga. Negro, so-called African American, that is the Indian in this land, the original indigenous of this land that was colonized. See, so when you point out a video about our colonization in defense of King James, I think you're missing a whole doggone point. And so this video is more for clarity, not to rebuttal anything. Just for clarification purposes. Because it's about seeing clear. This is not information. This is not information. This is a vibration. So we have to vibe before we can really, you know what I'm saying, take something in. You know, you have to vibrate to it. When we talk King James, we know we are talking about a period of colonization. Who someone is now claiming this throne in Scotland and claiming X, Y, and Z, authorizing this biblios, syncretinizing documentation to put it, to give it back to these Hebrew Israelites right here in the Americas that's already been here. This is, this is the Khan dynasty, Doc. Dr. Tracy, I'm talking to you. So our documents are repackaged and given back to us under the authority of this James. We understand the Jacobite uprising. We understand what we were up against. Even what James was, was up against with the English. Remember, this is a this is a more on more war, Doc. You know? I know you brought up the complexion of King James. We're gonna get on this. This is a more on more war, Doc. This War has to do with so-called swarthy people. And these swarthy people might be Hebrews on this side, Hebrews on that side. The swarthy people might be the seed of Jacob on one side, the seed of Esau on another side, because they are twins. And I ain't talking white and black. I'm talking black and black twins. This is more or more, and Edom is dark. And Israel is so-called dark. They're all copper tone. King David is a copper tone brother. I know you mentioned the, the references to his lips and all this stuff. 
But see, this is not history. This is our family vibration. You know what I mean? We have to, as a family, as the Khans, as the Maru Khans, as the priesthood, we are realizing what happened within our family infighting. To you, it's just black people. To you, it's just, oh, you guys are talking about uh, J.C. Ridpath, history of the United States. Nah, man, we're getting the dropout. We're getting the Moshe out. Because we know that they just discovered us here. Told us that we're from Africa, you see. So these voyages here to colonize us here, we're coming from other so-called black people in other lands from other tribes. And y'all just got in where you fit in, Doc. But I know when you have a doctor in front of your name, it just gives you this illusion that you got to have knowledge, information over the vibration. But this is not a time for the knowledge information. This is a time for the vibration, which is why you're featuring our drop. We're not chasing your drop to figure out what you got and what you discovered. You're, you're, you're digging on something that we discovered in 2016, Doc. Three years ago, Doc. But you want to point out one dispute of whether James was on the boat or not? Whether he's on the boat in 1603? I told you, Doc, we keep it classy around here. I'm just, I'm just venting because we put a lot of work into this, Doc, you know. You seem like a successful person, Doc. You're a doctor. But to bring up our drop to do with our colonization by another so-called black man. Whether you want to dispute that or not. We're talking tribal war, Doc. This has nothing to do with you. But you think it does, because you're a doc. We're talking our tribal war. So even if we miss the mark, we're going to get to the, we're going to get to the towel. We're going to get to the covenant. But looking back, I don't know if we missed the mark, doc. So we're going to have to go back together and see what we're talking about and see why your video is only to refute whether or not King James literally took a voyage in 1603. Instead of digging on the colonization and the patents itself, you say allegedly he had these, 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 these colonization paperwork. Allegedly, Doc, it's in the same source that you're featuring, Doc. You're going to feature the timelines, but not feature the actual drop that's in the book. You didn't even read from the book, Doc. But you got screenshots of the, of the timeline, Doc, but not the screenshot of the book. Because that's what we're getting on when we talk the patents. That's the body bag, the Hudson Bay. We're talking about the London Company. We're talking about the patents for longitude and latitude of our tribal land, Doc, from another melanated tribe, Doc. And it's been a more and more every since, Doc. So this is very emotional, but we're keeping it classy. We're just talking, Annie, uh, we're going to get to you, Doc. Fall back in the classroom. Take a seat. Clearly, you in the classroom from three years ago. We're going to the future. Let's go. Catch up, Doc. We we ride. Cause I know y'all paying attention. And it's for a reason. Because of a vibration. Something led you to our video. Something led you to this drop. For you to feature two indigenous Israelites videos, you know, we are indigenous Israelites here. We are the Amaru Khan tribes of Israel right here, right in the old world, Doc. By the way, Doc, this is the old world, Doc. Welcome. Welcome to the old world. This is where we're from. Now, before you disprove us, Doc, you might you might need some sources. I know you talk sources and you say, hey, well, you know, how do you substantiate this source and this source? And based on the field of study, this source might not be substantiated. Is this source and primary source? Doc, just come with something because you're digging on our sources that we brought out three years ago. But do you bring one source, Doc? Substantial, substantiated source that we can dig on? Some, some type of, whether it's primary, secondary, some type of source to prove that 
King James couldn't have taken a voyage in 1603. Nah, he, he's just not too friendly with other people, and he, he probably wouldn't want to go on that boat. Come on, Doc, that's not a source. And it wouldn't be a big deal, Doc, if your entire video was not specifically, oh, some people think that he made this voyage in 1603. But that, that must be a mistake. If that wasn't your premise, Doc, I wouldn't even say nothing. But since your whole premise is we're making a mistake by thinking he made this voyage, well, show us some substantiating proof or some type of source he didn't or couldn't have, even if he was coronated as king that year. Does it mean he couldn't make a voyage, Doc? Were you there, Doc? Do you know, Doc? Well, if I have a theory, Doc, and you come to disprove that, you damn sure better come with a source, Doc. Because I'm not knocking on your wall to disprove you. And if I do, I better have a source. But you're coming over here saying he can't be on this voyage. He wouldn't do. Nah, this date is just because he was coronated. How do you know he didn't hop on a boat and see things, Doc? You don't. Just like I can't prove without a shadow of a doubt he was on that boat. But either way, he signed the patents for the people to get on the boats, Doc. Whether he's physically on the boat or not is irrelevant. If that document, these patents got they hijacks on the boat to come hijack and invade and colonize our lands, Doc. This is not information. This is vibration, Doc. Welcome to the drop. If you want to be here, pull up a seat. We just talking Antia. Get pressed to John 41, man. It's a beautiful thing. AI of the Drop Nation, man. We're going we gonna to fall back. We're keeping it classy. It's a classy day. It's a beautiful, chilly night. On the warm, you know, reflection of our, of our ethers just shining through everybody. We're feeling good. It's all good. A hop to the to the home team. That means love, Doc. A hop. That means love, Doc. I got love for you, Doc. It's all good. Let's rock. Anion, man. So again, man, Anion was so important. Remember, because we just were digging on <coughs> the mythical straits of Anion. Before that, we're just talking about the San Banyan River, Doc. Get in the classroom. Pull up a seat, Doc. Let's go. <laughs> We're just enjoying the doc. It's all good, doc. You're welcome over here. You know what I mean? I just want you to see see clearly from 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 a perspective that's earthborn. You know what I mean? From an original perspective. I want you to understand why we do what we do. Why we're dropping this video or that video. It's not to bash King James and XYZ. It's to call out the bullshit when we spot it. And the wrinkles within the investigation, we can clearly see if this is the area of the hijack. Then who signed the docs to get these people over here to patent a land that's not theirs, doc? Because if it was theirs, they wouldn't have to patent it, doc. If it was theirs, they wouldn't be signing treaties, doc. Not with the invader to help them come over here and colonize, but the problem, doc, and it's no offense, but it's the trillness. It's the realness, Doc. Trill means too real, Doc. I gotta be too real with you, Doc. I gotta be trill, Doc. As a colonizer or descendant of a colonizer, you just don't see the colonization. So you miss the whole point. You miss the whole flow, Doc. Just to focus on one point of whether or not King James was physically on the boat in 1603. Just to discredit us and just to, you know, somehow, uh, you know, come to King James's rescue. You even say, I'm not trying to make it seem like he's perfect, Doc. Whether we all agree is one thing. But if you over here, at least here from, from my perspective. King James hijacked the shit out of the Israelites. King James is a Hebrew. But King James is not an Israelite. Some brothers link him with Jacob. That's cool because they rock. You know, they're connecting Jacobites. But when you dig on the Jacobites, the Jacobites were actually fighting against the Picts. The Picts were fighting the Jacobites. The Jacobites were under James. James named himself Jacob. 
So he named himself Jacob. That doesn't mean he's of Jacob. So this is a lot of trickery when it goes on with James, man. But when you dig on the docs that we about to pull out in your own video, fair use, fair use, you use my, you use my joint. I didn't give you permission, but you use my joint. Whether you played it or not is another thing, because I would appreciate it if you at least played it so that people can hear. But you just showed a bunch of screenshots all day. But it's all good, man. Copyright, man. Fair use, man. Fair use. It's all good. We'll talk about it. Hold up, man. Here's my disclaimer. Fair use, man. Because we're going to talk about the video. We have every right to. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107. Copyright Act 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, Doc. So don't get in your feelings. Get out your feelings, Doc. It's not, it's not emotional for you. We're going through something, Doc. We as a people that are just waking up to a reality that we've been invaded on our own land and that we are the tribes of Israel right here in America. It's coming through us, Doc. It's an ancient love song. I'm going to show you what I mean in a minute. But for right now, it's fair use, you know. So don't get in your feelings. We're just going to do some criticizing. You don't have to like it. But if you want to dig on it, since you chose to dig on it in the first place, this comes with the territory, Doc. We're going to make some comments, Doc. Matter of fact, I'm going to get on some comments real soon from Drop Nation. News reporting, teaching, scholarship, research. We're doing all this, Doc. All right? Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational doc. This is nonprofit. We don't monetize this platform. We don't monetize our YouTube platform. YouTube is not monetized. I get nothing from YouTube. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So we're just using this for comments and criticism, some research, some teaching, some scholarship. That's it, doc. We're going to make some comments, all right? That's all we're going to do. Fall back, Doc. Surf the way. Let's go. All right, man. We just talking press the job, man. First of all, all praise our creator, man. This is, uh, again, North, South America. And notice they got us over here on the so-called East now, right? So normally America would be over here. But... This map that's in the in the British Museum, they said it was probably done in around 1530s. So they, you know, are you on the east or the west? It's all about orientation. It appears that the Americas are the Far East. This is the Far East, man. All right. This is the West. You can see how Preston John had the whole block on lock because he was controlling the. What they call this the Barren Strait situation, but it's really the Straits of Anion. And we connected Anion to Arnon in the scripture. Get that drop in Presser John 41. I'm not going to go over all that. Get the drop. Anion is Arnon. And when you got the Arnon, you got all the Israelite wars with the Moabites and the borders from, you know, that uh, that divided uh, the, the Ammonites had their land. I mean, they even said the southern lands, which... Let you also know that the map is flipped. So even though they got you on the right side, you still got to flip everything upside down if you really want the correct orientation. But again, you see Cathay, Preston John, India Superior. And this right here, man, let you know Preston John had it on lock. Once you got that area on lock, you know, you got the three Indians on lock. I mean, bang, bang, bang. So we talk Antioch, pay attention to the same region in North America. Let's see. It's a cool little map I just stumbled on. Could have been one that uh my bro Groovy Huey, man. Shout out to Groovy Huey on Instagram, man. Follow him, man. Groovy, I believe Groovy underscore Huey too. But just check it out, man. I love to you, brother. He emailed me a gang of maps. On this Antioch, Antioch, why is it important again? You know, just to, just for the doc. I'm doing this for you, doc. Don't tell me I, 
Don't tell me I don't love you, Doc. All right? I wouldn't even do this if I didn't love you, Doc. It's all good, Doc. It's love. Ahab, Doc. Say it with me. Ahab. All right, man. We good. We good, Doc. So fall back. You know, we just chilling. We just chilling. We just chilling. Again, man, we're talking about the Samanyan River. All right, so it's a good river, Doc. You know what I'm saying? You might want to look into the Samanyan River. Um, you know, we're doing a recon on it. It's, it's a little deeper than King James, though. So get ready. You know what I'm saying? Get your rain boots. It's the Sabbath River. They say it flows six days and it rests on the Sabbath. Some call it a waterless sea. Some call it an under, underground river. All right. Where is it? Later in the Sefer, Rabbi Manasseh in Israel asked how the ten tribes remained so elusive. How come they couldn't find you? Many people ask that if it is true that the ten tribes of Israel exist in the world, why do we know nothing clear about them? They were looking for you. I'm just talking to my copper color Nagas that they were looking for. This is no difficulty for we see that even concerning things known to us, we do not know where they come from. You can't tell us where we're from, Doc. They don't know where we come from. Such as the source of the four rivers, the Nile, the Ganges, the Tigris, the Euphrates, which we also found in America. In addition, there are many hidden countries in the lands of Qadar. We're about to get to some great comments on Qadar. And in part of America. So we're talking about hidden countries. Again, this is for the Doc and the land of America, Doc. So when it comes to colonize with longitude and latitude patterns, we're not elude, we're not just delusional. We're not tripping. This was done to a people, and these people are reconning their vibration to recover our ancient love song. We're gonna get on that. And all the places in the north of the world, such as Florida. So hidden countries, hidden, hidden countries in America and Florida. The kingdom of Anion in the land of Peru. Anion. So we've been, you know, connecting it to the kingdom in Peru. Connecting it, you know what I'm saying, to the Presta John kingdom where you're talking Anion. Anion, Anion, Anion. And let's, you know, let's, let's, let's get on these maps, man, from my good brother, Groovy Huey, man. But I just wanted to, you know, again, that, that guy that popping on the Antion. And we're going to keep the investigation going, man. We're going to keep the investigation flowing. Look out for Preston John, number 42, man. I mean, that's 42, dang near two hours apiece. That's about 84 hours of published research we have on Preston John and with the research that went into that, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of hours from Drop Nation over the years, digging on Prester John. That's that's priest king. Doc Prester is priest. John is king. And yeah, when you recon him, he's also a Negro. Yeah, man, it's a Negro priest king. Doc, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. I mean, you know, these things are. It's wild, you know, when you think about what the world really looks like, Doc. So when we talk about Black King James, it's not a stretch for us, Doc, because we know what the world looks like. You know, when we're talking about Priest King Preston John, who is also King David, when you adjust our timelines, Doc, he's the actual King David, Doc. You know, we come from a lineage, Doc, you know what I mean? So we're just putting it together in real time. So I appreciate you digging on it, you know what I mean? But, you know, you have to get this work, you know what I mean, just to let you have... Just so we have clarity, Doc. That's all it is to it. You know what I mean? It, it's good work, though, because we all came to work. We all came to work, Doc. You know, we're just talking the Annie, connecting it to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The Doc's going to talk a little to you about Jerusalem today, and that's pretty dope. Thank you, Doc. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate you, Doc. Let's go. And then you go to the mythical states, Straits of Annie, and then that's when you connect it to this Bering Strait situation. That's where we got the map from it. And that's when it says that this map has placed Preston John and his idolatrous neighbors. You remember, you know what I'm saying? You're talking about King David and all the neighbors and Moab and all that stuff that was around David. Idolatrous neighbors not far from Mexico. Yeah, Moab has a lot to do with the Anian when you're talking the Arnon. When you're talking the Arnon. And yeah, Doc, you know, get the drop, Doc. You know, go check out that Preston John series, especially the last one. 
and we're gonna dig on the R9. And you know, next uh, you know, 42, we're gonna go you know deeper into the script on this man, so we can really see clearly on this Asherah situation or this Anian situation. You know, we're gonna connect it, Doc. You know, trust us, Doc. It's gonna be fun. We're just talking to Moabites and the Moabites and the Amorites and these wars that were going down. You get the drop. You dig on it. But it was very interesting, Doc, because, you know, we were digging on it. We kept uh, hitting some speed bumps, Doc. You know, we we were looking for Anion, the river Anion or the Strait of Anion. And then this Arnon started popping up all over the place. And we see it in the Google search, you know. In numbers, it is simply Anion, but in Deuteronomy and Joshua, generally, the river Arnon. Then you click on the link, and I'm not going to do it now, but get on the, you know, press the John 41. You're going to see that they changed all this to Arnon. So even this reads, after you click this link, I uh, find, I uh, find, I'm going to click one. It's the only one I'm going to click. But they just, you know, they're just switching it up on us, Doc. Let me get it bigger. I know you're a doctor. You might be having some specs on with your white coat. You know what I mean? I want to respect you. So again, in the Google search, it said the river in numbers, it is simply Ania. See how they switched it to Arna. And they did this with every single source and every single link on Google, like some super algorithmic hijack, you know, trigger reaction. Like we're getting too close. And then they switched everything to R9. In numbers, now it doesn't make sense. In numbers, it is simply R9. But in Deuteronomy and Joshua, generally, the river R9. Like you just said that. In numbers, it's R9. But in Deuteronomy, it's also R9. That don't make sense. But you know what does make sense, Doc? It's the original version that they still have listed in the Google search. In numbers, it is simply Anion. But in Deuteronomy and Joshua, what is known as the river Arna. And all these are like this. All these are like this. Up the bank of the river Anion. Arnon on the Anion River. Anion. And that's when we started digging on the Anion. And it led us to the Bering Strait. Which was also called the Strait of Anion. I know it sounds pretty remarkable. And that's when that map that we just had up. Has this Anion region. And we're going to see it on the other maps where, where we can see the Bering Strait. But it's going to say the Straits of Anion. And then notice it's in the same region as we found Priest King Prester John or King David. And this is recent, Doc. You're talking 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, 1500s. Portuguese are looking for Prester John for 500 years. They got a monument, Doc. Looking for the... You know, R.I.P. to all the seafarers who died looking for Preston John from 1200 to 1700. But they just found us, and they just found the kingdom of Preston John. California Gold Rush, Montezuma's Gold, you know, Matsumusa, all this original stuff popping off here. This is Mexico, just like they said they found them near Mexico. Same region, Ania. So, you know, we could romanticize, literally, we can romanticize, like Romanian, ah, Romanian, because we know we're talking Rome, I mean, you know we're talking Roma, are we talking Romanian, I mean, Doc, we're just surfing the wave, we don't have to be, we ain't worried about being right, Doc, we ain't worried about being right, you know, we're just trying to ask the right questions. We might not have all the answers. We just want to, you know, make sure we're putting together the right questions. So, when we dig on Anion, remember, man, we're talking about North America, right? India Superior. India Superior. This is La Florida. This is Mexico. All right. And here you got China, La China. All right, all right. So, we know this. You know, I'm just surfing the way. You got Peru. But, yeah, it's called India Superior. So all this is going towards this being the superior India, and that's exactly where Preston John is located, in the superior India, or as some would call the Grand Tartary, all right? But this is the old world, Doc, all right? We're just talking the original people. Oh, man, it gets deep, Doc.
it gets deep. Because not only when you talk King James, man, but you got to talk Charles too, right? Are we, are we talking King Charles? We're going to dig on it, but I'm pretty sure we're talking King Charles, Doc. I'm pretty sure we're talking Holy Roman Emp Emperor King Charles. Charles the Charles V, Charles Quinto, the same black Charles that's on this Inca Inca painting from what year? See, painting can be dated circa 1800 of Charles V hijacking the Inca. Now, these Inca could already been hijacked. They could be Batucan's people because Batucan became the Vatican or Vatican. The Vatican is Batucan. And this could just be another, you know, Edomite takeover, you know what I'm saying, of this Moabite situation. This could be Edomite taking over Moab. This could be all kinds of stuff happening with these Inca. I mean, you know, we can at least surf the wave when we talk. Charles, I want to get to this stuff. I don't want to, you know, I already did this, right? We already did this. You know, we just breaking it all down for the doc. You know, be be very patient, Drive Nation. It's all good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah, we just going down the road, man. Again, man, fair use, man. Fair use in your caboose bone. Fair use in your caboose bone. I want to uh, give some love to my brother, Groovy Huey. And he dropped all these off. Yeah, go in the drop chatter, man, so you can get all these links. We're going to talk about this drop. This is what the doc's talking about. And we're going to feature the doc's drop under the uh, Copyright Fair Use Act for Criticism and Comments. All right. When we talk Anion or Arna, the brother Groovy Huey dropped some great maps. Here you see California right there. Let's see if we see Antion or Arna on this one. Yeah, it might be on the next one. Let me see. Here we go. Here we go. This is an interesting map right here, man. Groovy here we got the drop, man. I mean, you see America here. Then you see Cathay. Right here, it says in Asia. Now, right here, you see the Strait. See it bigger, the Strait of Anion. Make sure you can see it. Where am I at? There I go. All right. Bang, bang. All right, cool. So you see the Strait of Anion, and I guess they would say that would be the Bering Strait. And there's Peru right there. And somehow this connected, you know, we're still digging on it, to the kingdom of Antioch. They call him the kingdom of Antioch in Peru, right? But you know it has to do everything with priest King Preston John or King David. Let's check out some more maps, man. It's pretty good. Groovy Hill, we got the drought. Oh, man, look at this one. All right, again, North America here. I know it's small, but Antioch Regnum. Just letting you know it's a kingdom. And it's right here where the four corners is. Which is right here where Prester John is rocking or King David. Letting you know what time it is when we talk Utah. Utah is Judah. So you know you're talking, you know what I mean? When you talk um, the Grand Canyon and, and Arizona and Utah Territory and Colorado, I mean, all that is Judah territory on the old maps. There was no Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico. It was all Utah or Judah territory. And where's Preston John? Right here in Judah. Where's King David? Right here in Judah. Let's go. Anion, huh? Again, are we talking like Roman, Romanian, like Romanian, Romanian, Romanian? Are we talking about uh like the Anak, like the Anak, like the Giants? Are we getting back into the Giants? Cause love to natural by law, we're gonna dig on some of the Giants, right? Are we talking Anak, the Anakim, the Raphim, Raphael, Nephilim? Are we talking the An? Or this is you know, are we talking Romania, Roman? Remember the Roma or Ramon in Hebrew literally means pomegranate. Alright? Pomegranate is why you see granata. Or pomegranata, 
Granata is pomegranata, and that's what Joshua and Caleb had to bring back the pomegranate to prove that they were in the promised land. So this Ramon literally connects to being in the promised land, which is why the real Ramon or Ramani are you. They stole the title Roman, but you are the Ramani, just like you're the Cathay. Cathay. All right, make sure you can see that. You're the Cathay. The Cathay is the what they started calling Catholic. All right. All this stuff came from you. These are your titles. Cathay, the Black Katai. All these titles belong to the so-called Negro in America that don't know who they are. That was just found here because they came over here and enslaved us and put us in captivity on our own lands. Picking us up from Florida or from Mississippi or South Carolina and dropping us off in, in the Bahamas. We got the documentation, Doc. They didn't bring us from Africa. They took us from here and dropped us off. They took us from here, dropped us here, took us from here, dropped us here, took us from here. You know, they just did a little switcheroo, a little Rochambeau. We're just talking about the Straits of Anion, Doc. What else we got, Groovy? What's this, man? What's this? Uh huh. Okay, right there again. You see Anium Regnum and this Quivera, Quivera. That V probably was a W, like Carrera, which almost sounds like Korea, man. So, you know, hey, man, this ain't play play. Just like on the um, map we have here, we have India, right? India Superior, right? North America, South America. Then you have China, all right? And other maps have this Zipangu. I think he's going to show it, Groovy Huey. He's going to show that drop. So if China's over here, man, then you probably have a Korea over here or a Japan or a Kapangu, as they call it. We'll get that. We'll get that. But, yeah, you see the same thing, Quiveria, which is what they call a California area. All right. What does this have to do with Khalifa's territory and King David or Solomon's territory? And is this Korea? That's kind of interesting. All right, all right. Let's check out some more of this drive, man. Groovy. Okay, okay. This right here. Are they showing some type of navigation situation cutting through California? Interesting, man. Guru Hughes is just digging on it. It probably has another Antion situation. It's just too small to really see. Yeah, I love maps, man. I can stay at maps, man. All dang day. That's an interesting navigation piece. I'm sure I'm missing a lot. I'm going quickly. You know, I'm going quickly because I want to get to this drop, Doc. We got a conversation. <laughs> we on a path, Doc. <laughs> we on a path. Let's go. Um, Interesting here, too. So you see, again, America's on the east side, not the west side, even in these type of uh, projections. And you also just see the connection. So when you talk about a Genghis Khan invasion, you're not really talking about coming across, you know what I'm saying, the Atlantic per se. You, you, th this is how it was going down. Asia right into the Americas, man. Right into Antion. Right into, you know what I'm saying, Preston John. You know what I mean? You see how Genghis Khan just, this whole invasion could have happened with this projection. You know what I mean? Not necessarily the 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 one that's brainwashed and, and triggered into our psyche whenever we talk about colonization we talk about it coming through the Atlantic but nah man this is probably where it was popping especially back then and the war probably popped off right around this area right here when we you know start reading those uh great sources like Preston John the legend and the sources love to top battle that talk about the war specifically with Genghis Khan and Preston John or Tagrul Khan you know what I mean these are all so-called Negroes man these are all Hebrew Israelites that are indigenous originally to this Judah, you know what I mean, to the Americas, you know what I mean, and this is the indigenous lands, and uh, love to Yohanan, the Hebrew prince, man, he had a great point, you know, talking about the giants, and just did a great presentation, man, again, 
I featured that, but definitely subscribe to your to Hebrew Prince. You know about this being the lands of, of 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 Canaan and going into these lands. And again, we were already here. We were always reclaiming our indigenous territories. These lands that are for us are originally for us, and then we have to reclaim them against the Canaanites or these giants or whatever the case is. But we're gonna get back at them giants, and natural by law is about to take it home. That's why I'm going, man, so we can get a great dismount from our brother Natural by Law. Let's get another map. Hey, uh, to the groovy. See all this great recon this brother did, man. Get in the drop chatting. Uh huh. Got this Tartarian situation. And that's where Genghis Khan was mainly rocking out of, and then crossing up through, you know, so called Asia into North America, the whole Strait of Antioch. Drop right there. And again, I wish I could. Oh, there we go right there. Straight of Antioch. I wish I could see it. Oh, there we go. Straight of Antioch. So, this is probably, see these boats right here, man. This is probably how that particular situation went down in 1202, 1203. Could be, could be. Either way, great drop, man. Right here again, it says Strait of Antioch. So we're seeing it over and over again. Why is it important? Again, because we got the Arnon River connection. So now you can match up these biblical stories with either this area here or, you know, deeper down towards Peru. But at least gives you, you know, somewhere else to focus your investigation. And this is my point right here. Where I said, could that Quera be Korea? Because you see, Mex this is Mexico. This is the Strait of Antioch. This is North America. All right. This is China. The China. You saw that on the map. This is Japan, where it says Zapangu. But you see it right here connected. Like it's California down there. Like, you know, connected, man. Right here in the Pacific. Mexico, South America. So then... They took this old world and projected it over there and what they call the old world today. And now they have a new Japan, a new China, you know what I'm saying? A, a Spain there, you know, whatever you want to call it. A Rome, because we can connect this Rome situation right here again with Romanian or the Anian, Anian. And is this Rome? I mean, is this all the original drop? That's the investigation we are on and that's where we're picking it up at, man. And Groovy Huey left us with this drop here. Let's see if we can get it bigger. Again, we see Annie in right here. And just so you don't think it's play, play, Doc, and that we're really digging on it. In our heritage, my Doc. <laughs> this is what we're talking about, Doc. They didn't bring these indigenous people off the boat from Africa, Doc. These people were found here. And these are our ancestors, Doc. So when we talk colonization in King James 1603, it's more than making a point of whether or not James had his ass on that doggone boat. It ain't about him having his ass on the boat, Doc. It's about the paperwork that put asses on the boats, Doc. So we're going to get it right here. Love again to Groovy Huey, some great Anion drop. I dropped all the links below, so even you can click on it, Doc. Let's go. And get in the drop chat. Even you're invited to get in the drop chat. Password is 1234 to get through the door at 432thedrop.com. Doc, what is 432 to drop, Doc? 432 to drop radio is a community supported drop nation, educational and artistic platform, Doc. Promoting the indigenous healing vibration, 432 hertz, Doc. That's the nine, that's the spiral, Doc. That's the vibration. That's the ancient love song. Let's talk about that. Surf the wave 24-7 and enjoy the flow of redemption. Drop Nation, it's a vibration. We're not just in it for the information. But if you need some information, just dig on. And again, love to let us find the truth for this doc, man. It's an amazing drop he did on the selling of Joseph by Samuel Seawall. I just want to bring up this ancient love song. Since I keep saying it. When we try to be thorough around here, Doc, when it comes to sources, hey, you know, this is a great source. It's a great source when we talk vibration. 
Samuel Seawall. Let's go. You know, sometimes hard to find real legible copies of this stuff, but let's just surf the wave, my doc. Let's just surf the wave. I don't like this one already, Doc. I don't like this one already. Okay. It might be okay. Oh, man. I wish I had, you know, I'm going to do another drop and read this again. I know we did it probably a couple years back. But, man. So, you know, Samuel Seawall, you know, was like an abolitionist. So that was really trying to go to bat for why are you treating these people so bad. And he was literally trying to say that these people that you're treating bad right here in America, he called us Ethiopians. We know that this is the real Ethiopia. We know this is the real Egypt, Doc. This is Atlantis, Doc. This is where it started. And yeah, he calls us Ethiopians and says that we're sons of the first Adam and all this stuff like this. And then he talks about the ancient love song. I'm going to drop this link so you can get all this. My people, my people, I'm talking to you. You know what I mean? I want you to get all this again. This is a little different than the one we dropped, so I'm looking for this little part. Of, oh, there we go, right there, Doc. Let's go. Let's get it from right here. And then, you know, I want I want you all to do the recon on this, man. He says, Christians should carry it to all the world as the Israelites were to carry it one towards another. And for men, obstinately, to persist in holding their neighbors and brethren under the rigor of perpetual bondage seems to be no proper way of gaining assurance that God has given them spiritual freedom. So these Christians are overtaking these Israelites right here in America, Doc. And he's saying, how can you put them in perpetual bondage? Well, of course, we researched the papal bull, Doom Diverses, 1452, putting all us Saracens, Negroes, in perpetual bondage, mainly the tribes of Israel. And that's why on that timeline it says the takedown of Israel around the 1300s, 1400s, Doc, because it lines up with the Papal Bull taking down Jerusalem. And that's when they found us, Doc. They just took down Jerusalem right here in America, Doc. And we are the Israelites. We are lots of people, Doc. We've been put in perpetual bondage, Doc. Seems to be no proper way of gaining assurance that God has given them spiritual freedom. Now listen to this, Doc. And my people, I'm talking to you. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures. This is written in the 1700s about these Ethiopians in America. We're about to read it right now. You pull it up, Doc. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song. How has their blessed Savior altered the measures? Look here, man. When we talk King James, when we talk New Test, when we talk Papu Bull, or excuse me, Papu Va, the ancient quiche sacred writings, and they say, or or the small print from Domenico de Vizio, a Spanish friar who says, one of the missionaries says, this is the God, this the most frequently, the most frequently mentioned God here in this land is a mention of the framer and the shaper. By that, we're talking about our mother and our father. See, the Christians just talk about the father but then they say, oh, wisdom, wisdom. No, see, in our indigenous culture, wisdom is our mother. So we have a mother and father unity. Now, what did they do to our mother and father unity that gave us an ancient love song? This is our 432, our spiral. 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9. 9 is not a number. It's a spiral. It's a portal. What did they do to your ancient portal? 
our blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song. So when people deal with Christ, when you speak Greek, when you choose to speak Greek and say Christ, you have to immediately connect that with the anointed of the hijacks, the anointed of the Greeks. We can break it down many ways and we can interpolate it many ways, but we're talking about their blessed Savior. That's their anointed. It's a general word for the anointed in the mind of a hijack. That's anointing something that will alter your measure or your ancient love song. That's why we don't deal with Christ because that's their blessed Savior. Now we know who our Mashiach is. We don't need to speak Greek. Let's just keep it real. Because when we start speaking Christ, everything gets muddled. A whole other story gets altered. Now we got to go in there and get the babies out to unalter what the authorship is being done by who? King James. Who's authorizing the altering of the measure of your ancient love, man. So something happened, Doc, during this colonization that has altered the measures of our ancient love song. I mean, are you, are you rocking with me? Are you feeling me, Doc? Are we together? I mean, you know, I told you we're going to keep it classy. I know we don't know each other like that. And I know you're just probably trying to drop some information and didn't quite know what you were doing. I mean, you thought you did, you know, you're a doc. You have to think you do. Maybe you didn't overstand our objective. And if we want to go tick for tat, did King James have his ass on the boat or not? None of us could prove it. So you can't make a video to disprove it or say that we're making mistakes. Could you say it three or four times? Oh, people make mistakes, you know, by thinking that this is this. People make mistakes by assuming by making assumptions. So you can only make an assumption that King James didn't have his ass on that boat, man. Because you weren't there. So if I have a theory that says he did. And if he didn't, did he do the paperwork and the London patents and the Hudson Bay Company patents to get asses on boats? That's the purpose and the objective of the video. But now we got to talk about it. Because their blessed savior... Their blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song. And what? And set it to a most excellent new tune. So when we say King James colonized or put this colonization in place, it was already in progress with Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, Preston John War plays, because this is 1202, 1203. Now in comes... The rest of Genghis Khan's family. Now in comes the Batu Khan, which becomes the Vatican. Khan. Khan means priest. Do you agree in the priestly vibration? My doc. You my doc. You my doc. All right? But we've been getting murdered. My doc, we've been getting murdered. My doc. We're just talking about them reaching Preston John's land. The children of Preston John, doc. I mean, it's, it's not complicated, Doc. It's not complicated. Because, you know, this is what we do. This is what, this is what we dig on. We're talking about the kingdom of Ania. Oh, yeah, you got to get these links quick. Because, you know, they start... You know, tearing these pages away, man. Garcia was very familiar with Zaltieri's map and Mald Maldonado's description of the straits. He referenced both in his narrative. Perhaps he also was attracted by the comment on the rapid tides that cover them. The Arnado River, which may struck him as a possible allusion to the river San Banyan's mythical behavior. Now we're back to the San Banyan. Where is it? Where is this San Banyan River? The strange side of Jewish history. It connects to our lineage, Doc. So we have to, you know, we have to dig on it. It 
connects to our lineage, Doc. When we talk King James, when we talk his complexion or anything else, it connects to our lineage, Doc. You know, we're just digging on us. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah, there's different depictions. And you're going to show a real cartoony one. But I'm showing you real portraits. Do you see a, a white or do you see a melanated brother right here? We're going to get it, Doc. You know, because it's all about our lineage, Doc. This is all we're waking up to. This is all we're doing. So we talked to Arnon. When you can put the ante out to the Arnon, you really start putting everything right here in the old world. And then you could trace those wars with the Moabite, Amorite, all that. You know, Deuteronomy 3, Numbers 21. We're going to get that. Press the job. 42. Yeah, 42. I'm about to say, well, 43. Because again, it's all about Arnon. Arnon before. It was Anion. In Numbers, it is simply Anion. But in Deuteronomy and Joshua, generally the river Arnon. So they're hiding something, Doc. And that's why we're digging on Arnon, Anion. Oh, man. Another good map. Here we go. Here we go. Anion region. Korea, which again looks like Korea. All right, so we might have Japan, Korea, China, all that right over here. When we're digging on it enough. Anya, Anya, Anya. We got this great doc from the races of men, doc. These are just sources. These are just sources. This is how we have to rock. This is how we, this is how we roll. It's not about primary, secondary. It's just that you have sources. So when you want to debunk somebody, bring at least one source to the party, doc. The Races of Man, A Fragment, by Robert Knox, Source. The Dark Races of Man, page 167. I believe offered the credulous for credulous for the peopling of America. They're just trying to figure out how we got here, Doc. No problem, right? Always accepting that standby of the thoroughbred theorists, namely that the Copper Indians... We're just talking about the copper races. You got the old, you got the old penny, Doc. Let's not play about what copper is. Let's not play about what olive is. Let's not play about what swarthy is. The copper Indians, that is the true Americans, Doc. Hold up, man. Hold up, Doc. Hold up, Doc. You know, I gotta. We gotta take our time with this doc. Where's that great drop? Where's that great drop? We're just talking the copper Indians. Let's not get it twisted, doc. So you don't think, oh, this is hearsay. Doc, sources, doc, maps. We know who we are. We know what the definition of an American is in the Webster Noah Dictionary in 1828, doc. You got to get it like it's the first time for the doc, y'all. You ready? Let's read it together. American. A native of America. That means natural. We're going to get that natural by law dismount. Originally applied to the aboriginals, the original people, or the copper colored races found here by the Europeans. Doc, you and your people just found us here. And then you took our titles by applying them to the descendants of Europeans. But what happened to the originals? What happened to the Khans? The American, the Khan dynasty, the priesthood, Wang Khan. What happened to Preston John's people, Doc? If you get our titles, if you could take the title of an American, what happens to the Wang Khan Preston John title? What happens to our priesthood if you can take the con? If you could take the priesthood, Doc, what happens to our con? Man, what happens to the copper color races, Doc? What happens to the copper color races, Doc? <laughs> the true Americans, Doc, were the lost tribes of Israel who fled there on rafts headed by Prester John. Body bag, Doc. Body bag for the illusion. 
so we know who we are. This is King David. Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's just go. Let's go. So rock with us, man. Rock, you know, just rock with us. We're about to get this uh this video, man. We're about to jump into it from the dock, man. You know what I mean? And uh let's just go. Let's just go, man. Love to the dock. You know, all rights reserved and all that stuff. Again, man. Fair use. We just doing criticism, even if you don't like it, we have a right to criticize any work that's published. Books, whatever the case is, videos, whatever, comments, teaching, news program, scholarship and research. We don't monetize this YouTube platform. So let's go. Rock with me, Doc. Oh, we gonna get it. Yeah, man. I had to break it back, man. I'm gonna let my little homie uh, you know what I'm saying, ride on you at the end, man. <laughs> let's get it, man. Um I gotta be, you know, she got Coldplay playing through this whole thing. I, I guess it's just what it is, man. So we're going to have to, uh, you know, hit these timestamps pretty sharp. But let's just, uh, <laughs> let's surf the way, man. Hey, ah. Welcome to the community classroom. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. And what we're going to be talking about uh, is the question of whether King James 6 and 1 uh, actually came to America in 1603. There is a belief uh, that has been going on for a few years now uh, that King James actually ventured to the Americas, particularly the American mainland, uh, in 1603. Uh, there are also assertions regarding charters that he allegedly created uh, and uh, that he was you know, actively facilitating the transatlantic slave trade. One thing to remember when dealing with monarchs in particular who have uh, been maligned in history. Uh, uh, sometimes let me just back up a little bit. You know, actively mainland. And again, it wouldn't be a big deal, Doc, but you wouldn't have to put a disclaimer. What you're about to say is, and I'm not trying to make King James look perfect. I'm not, you wouldn't even have to say that if you weren't literally coming to his aid and rescue to try to patch up whatever you think we're taking away to discredit this King James. And all we're doing is digging on our family history. We are Hebrews. King James is a Hebrew, but we are from different tribes. And this is how that takeover is going down and how it's going to coincide, coincide with your timeline, Doc. So... It's one-sided from the beginning, and we can hear it with statements like this. Uh, in 1603, uh, there are also assertions regarding charters that he allegedly created uh, and uh, that he was you know, actively facilitating the transatlantic slave trade. Allegedly created, Dot, the same source that you were about to feature from what we already dropped. The same information that you're going to borrow for your platform in that same book, it's laying out the patents from King James. I don't see you arguing the timeline or any of the screenshots of the information. Why aren't you cracking open the book and reading the patents? That means I got to do it again, Doc. That means my little homie got to do it from 2016. So it's not an allegedly... Allegedly, there's there's doc. This is a great source. You're gonna big up the book. You know, J.C. Ridpath ain't no play play. He's saying that King James has multiple patents on the land of America. Let's go. Uh, in 1603, uh, there are also assertions regarding charters that he allegedly created. By you doing that, that's like your hijack magic, so we can doubt it when the same source is clearly saying it, doc. We're, we're aware, you know, of this frequency. We're aware of these little words and these uh, allegedly this. That means, okay, you haven't proven it. Well, we, we're giving you a source. Give us a source that's disproven it. Give us a source that says he didn't have patent. You're not going to do that. You're just going to say allegedly. And I don't like that, Doc. You're better than that. Uh, and uh, that he was 
you know, actively facilitating the transatlantic slave trade. He signed the patents to colonize the Americas. I don't know how more active you can be when it comes to colonization than signing two patents through the Hudson Bay and the London Company. Where do you think our taxes go? Drop. Doc. <laughs> Doc, you got the... I told you, man, me and you, we the same. I just... I just said you got the drop. My subconscious called you drop. All right, that 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 lets you know I love you. All right, so don't take nothing wrong. But come on, Doc, <laughs> snap out of it, man. Where do you think our taxes go? We're talking London Company, man. Do the recon, Doc. Let's go. One thing to remember when dealing with monarchs, in particular, who have uh, been maligned in history, uh, sometimes there is that maligning in order to degrade the memory of that particular monarch. Stop, Doc. Stop with the violins. Look, you had your turn to speak. I'll link the video. They can go watch it. This is my turn. This is my response. Stop it, Doc. All right? No one's just doing this to discredit this royal king and, and give us some generality about how, how these regals uh, get talked bad about later. No, 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 Doc. We're digging on colonization in the source jc ridpath history of the united states doc through patents and sources of the patents matching them with the timelines and the voyages doc this is a sophisticated recon i don't think you're giving it credit this is not allegedly and you're giving those sources to the contrary doc particularly when a dynasty has been overthrown such as uh this dynasty was and so whenever there are succession battles, uh, you just need to take many things that are said about that particular monarchy, uh, sometimes with a grain of salt. So just take whatever we have to say with all this recon we're doing, with all this research we're doing with a grain of salt, because we might just be bad mouthing King James for the hell of it. Come on, man. We dodged the hijack. That That's a horrible disclaimer, because if it wasn't, you wouldn't have to say this. Now, that's not to suggest that King James was perfect. Yeah, because you just laid a whole, you know, you just wiped his ass with with uh, some baby wipes. You know, he has a fresh, <laughs> he has a fresh smell now, but he's not perfect just because he, he has a fresh smell. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You don't want him to be guilty of the colonization. And you also don't want him to be a brother. You want him to be, you know, looking more like this. You want to claim this King James. You want this to be a successful white king so that you can have a heritage. But he's not. And you feel that takes something away from your colonizing heritage. That even Europe didn't look like you, Doc. Even Europe in 1600s didn't rock like you, Doc. Even Russia didn't look like you, Doc. This is a fact. So when we dig on history, it seems to shake up the foundation of everybody's so-called information, which is why you got to come with a chip on your shoulder and say, yeah, you know, they're just trying to discredit King James. I'm not saying he's perfect, but, you know, allegedly he has these patents. You said all this in a minute and 36 seconds. I'm tired. I'm done. Let's go, man. Let's go to the next flow, man. Let's get through this, man, before I go crazy. Let's get to the good stuff. Hold up, man. I got I to gotta get this right because you got this Coldplay playing throughout the whole video. Uh, channel that we're going to look at is the Metamorphosis. Shout out to Metamorphosis. What up, family, man? Peace up, man. I, I had to do it. Let's go. Metamorphosing channel. And this video uh, was entitled King James Caused Colonization. Um, I'm going to read the rest of that because uh, it's pretty provocative. Um, but at any rate, so what? this is the... It's too provocative to read the family's title? What's provocative about this title, y'all? Let's read it together. King James Caused Colonization. Well, allegedly, they're just probably trying to badmouth them. But he's not perfect. Clearly, you're coming over here to simp for King James. Because you don't have the facts. But you're going to say how easy it is for us to get the facts wrong. But this is too provocative to read. King James calls colonization. The Israelites will not like this truth. Why is that? 
because most Israelites that are still rocking or under some other spell of this Christianity that just make a Greek anointed they they more they metamorphose him <laughs> shout out to metamorphosis they metamorphose this Greek Messiah into this Hebrew brother you know and, and it's crazy man because you're taking a story that's packaged up literally for your downfall literally as a spell it's not pure water you're gonna get the drop in the line but it's not pure water and it was packaged and authorized not only did he authorize this spell to hit you and be repackaged in this English spell language put on you. But he also did sign these patents that we're going to get. My little homie's going to ride on her. Don't even trip. And we're going to talk about the patents again. Because this is a fact, not an alleged case. And this is not a provocative title. Because certain Israelites would not like this truth. What's so provocative about Israelites not liking certain, certain truth? Unless you don't know who the Israelites are. Book that the individual was using uh, related to this question of whether King James came to America. And it is the history of the United States. It's a very good book in terms of uh, resources and information about America under the Aboriginal nations. All right, all right. Time stamp, time stamp. You know, I got to dodge this cold play. Let's dodge the cold play. Let's get it from right here. Hey, man, shout out to everyone who's been sharing and viewing this video. 80,000, let's get it to 100,000, man. Let's get this video shared to AI to all of the, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? When you share these, these drops, it really makes it make sense. You know what I'm saying? It makes all the long hours. I mean, this is it's 3, 4 o'clock in the morning right now. It makes it make sense, man. These are teachable moments, Doc. So again, ain't nothing personal between me and Dr. Tracy. I don't know Dr. Tracy. I'm just digging on this. It's really to make this a teachable moment for our community. This is for us. This is for us, Doc. Because it's always been for us. When we talk tribal, we talk our creator. It's a tribal creator, and it's been for Israel. It's been for us. But, you know, I appreciate you for sharing the drop. You know what I mean? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 432, The Drop Radio. Okay. Uh, another video related to the exact same book. Um, there's only a year difference in terms of the publications of the books. Uh, the individuals actually had hard copies of the book, uh, so that's an important thing to note. And uh, this video, uh, it was in 2016, and the title was the 1603 Voyage of King James to Colonize the Copper-Colored Race of America. Ooh, that wasn't too provocative. I think she had to think about that. But now we know that the definition of an American is the copper-colored race is found here by the European. Let's get it at 440. Uh-oh, that's the hijack. This is the inside of the book, and one of the good things about the book is that it, in, it includes a number of charts and maps and all sorts of resources inside of the book, so lots of visual aids. And one of the charts includes, uh, you know, timelines. And so this particular timeline for chart one was a period of voyages and discoveries um, down at the bottom. Now, there are a number of... No. Clearly, it says period of voyages and discoveries. So when we are talking about these particular people of interest and they're being placed in a framework of voyages and discoveries, they're not just mentioning King James because he was coronated that year. There's a lot of things going on. They're not just mentioning him for the hell of it. They're mentioning him because he had some participation in the voyages and discoveries, Doc. Whether he's on the boat or not, none of us can prove. But did he participate in the voyages? Yes, Doc. Through the London Company patents and the Hudson Bay Company patents, he's participating in the colonization, so-called discoveries of the so-called New World, Doc. That's all we're talking about. I mean... That's all we talk about. For things on this actual chart. And so this might be a little bit confusing because it suggests that the entire uh, chart was just about the voyages and discoveries. 
you damn sure. You damn right. It, it's confusing, Doc. If you're saying that there's a bunch of stuff on there that has absolutely nothing to do with voyages, voyages and discoveries, or you're confused and you're not linking and connecting and separating the dots to gain your boy, your boy, King James, your boy that he he's not perfect, but I just wiped his ass, but he's not perfect. Did he colonize the Negroes in America? Did he colonize the Israelites in America? And is he a Hebrew? Edomite? Is he? You have to dig on it. Is he of the seed of Esau? You have to dig on it. Is he colonizing enemies? You have to dig on it. Would he colonize his own people? Would he colonize land that belongs to him? You have to dig on it. But we have to keep going. Let's go to 545. I think we're doing very good, Doc. From the Metamorphosing uh, channel. Now pay attention because this is actually some good drop, Doc. Hey, Doc, you kind of did your thing on this one. And it's uh, highlighting King James. And you can see uh, there's a notation about King James over to the right hand side. It's not clear on here, but it will be a little bit more clear. And so what is being pointed out is that you see King James 1. And you also see the date is 1603 on this particular chart. Another thing that you see on here, which is important to note, is up at the top it says, The Kingdom of Jerusalem Overthrown. Doc! Man, really, I gotta get love to Metamorphosin. But I gotta get love to Doc because I don't even know if Metamorphosin even pointed this out. <laughs> And this is, it differed from my book. So Metamorphosing book was a little different. I think she said, based on her knowledge of it, that my book was uh, written a couple years earlier, when not published earlier. But clearly this has some drop in it that mine didn't have. Mine just talks about Columbus being born around this time, whatever. And he's the Christ bearer, right? He's Cristobal. He's Baal. He's Christ, he's Christ Baal. He's the Cristobal, Cristobal Colombo, right? Hmm, someone's taking away your ancient love song. Someone's taking away your ancient love song, man. Come on. Now it says right here, starting at the 1300s, going all the way to the 1500s, the kingdom of Jerusalem overthrown. Body bag, Daniel. Cause we're talking about voyages and discoveries. Now let's back it up. Here it says the Western continent unknown to the European nations. Back to the 1100s. Now 1165, you have the letter of priest King Prester John that reaches Ottawa, Friesland, but is directed to Emmanuel over there in the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire is taken out in 1453, one year after the Papal Bull 1452 says subjugate all these Saracens, put them in perpetual slavery, take their movable and immovable goods, their kingdoms, their dukedoms, their principalities. You see, Doc, this was a strategic takedown, and we've been saying it, and right at that same mark, but it really was being, you know, it, it was being campaigned. Damn near 100 years before that, obviously, because you're talking about the overthrow of priest King Preston John right here in 12 1200. All right. After the 1165 letter, 1200 overthrow of Preston John, supposedly. All right. Genghis Khan. Then now you have this overthrow of Jerusalem after this takedown of Preston John. And again, the Papal Bulls in 1452, 1453, the fall of the Byzantine Empire. And that's who the, the letter of Preston John from 1165 was intended directly to Emmanuel, right? Emmanuel, who most likely was his family, right? The Byzantine ruler and the Byzantine. We're talking Constantinople, but we're really just talking Mazaka, Doc. Because before it was called Khazaria or Constantinople, it was called Mazaka. And before that area in Turkey... Constantinople was called Mazaka. It was called Mosak. 
M-O-S-O-C-H. And that is Moses. That is Meshi, Moshe, Mosach, who they call Mosach the founder. And that's the foundational legend that they're burying. And we did drops on that doc. Go get them. Go get them. Go surf the wave. So this area was also called Mosach the Byzantine, which connects to the Rus or the Rusians. The Rusians, doc. Oh, man, it gets good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be swift, doc, but it gets so good when we dig it on us. Because I never liked history, doc. I never even liked to read until I realized one thing, doc. I am the book. Doc, we are the book. So when we talk Russians, when we talk Europe, you're talking us. You're talking so-called Swarthy. You're talking the so-called Negro. When you talk the Andrews and the Rus, you're talking the Rus, doc. Andrews Crest. This is Rus. This is Russia. Russia's named after these Ruses, doc. Again, the Andrews Crest, family crest. Just the curly head Negro, right? King, regal Negro, doc. These are the Hebrew Israelite kings and queens, doc. Scotland, doc. So yeah, King James connects to Scotland and all that, but that don't make him Israel, doc. He's just, he's a Hebrew. He's part of the family. Yeah, we got the same lineage. We're twins, doc. Esau and Jacob are twins. Now, some camps got this, oh, no, Esau must be white and this and this. I don't think they see clearly, doc. No, Esau and Jacob are twins. And the tribes of Esau were still hijacking the Israelites, doc. These are the Russians, doc. These are the Rus. Can you dig it? It's up to you. It's up to you if you really want to surf the way. But this is interesting again. Because we're talking about the kingdom of Jerusalem overthrown. And now we got to surf the wave in chronology, Doc. Now we got to go to Anatoly Fermenko and the Russian chronographers that's putting together a whole new chronology that's saying thousands of years have been added. You know, these, these time shifts have been going on 333 years, 1,778 years, uh, 1,054 years. These are just three different time shifts, and they're pushing our real time back. So they're pushing stuff back way back to 70 A.D., when it really was happening in the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, Scaliger, Scaliger and Patavius are just changing the entire chronology, changing the history and pushing our real shit that was happening in 1200s and 1300s, pushing it back, you know, a thousand years, 1800 years, way back to the so-called B.C.s. And now we got a King David in the B.C.s that should be right here in the 1100s, 1200s. So see, Doc, we're, we're, we're putting it together in real time. And what they say happened in 70 A.D. with Vespasian and Titan and, and the whole siege of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. might have just happened, Doc, in 13, 1400. And Columbus might have been a big part of taking down Jerusalem right here in America, Doc. And that's why all these maps are so important. Because the Israelites were just found. Look at them looking like they in Eden. And they were taken down, Doc, right here in America. The war happened. Then the Papal Bull sealed the deal. And they ain't, they ain't never retracted the Papal Bull. It still says take down these Saracens, these Israelites. Take them all down. These are all Saracens. It says take down all the enemies of Christ. But Christ is a Greek word again, meaning the anointed of the Greeks. It's the anointed of who? The hijacks, the Greeks. They only worship Jupiter, Doc. Jupiter is Zeus, Doc. He is Zeus, Jesus, Doc. Christus, Christus refers to their hijack. And that's why we got about this excellent new tune. Yeah. Selling of Joseph by Samuel Seawall. It says, Our blessed Savior, who's that? Zeus, Doc, has altered the measures of the ancient love song of the Hebrew indigenous aboriginals or originals, autochthonous people. Indians in America and set it to a most excellent new tune, Doc. So now they gave us a new tune. Now we're in 440 hertz, right? Now we're in the Matrix. Cristobal, Columbus, Cristobal came with a new tune. King James signed patents for the new tune colonization. 
which all ought to be ambitious of learning. Oh, we should all learn this new tune. Now they're colonizing us more, Doc. Convert or die, Doc. That's what they did to us. These Ethiopians. Clearly, we're talking about the new world. Why are we being called Ethiopians, Doc? Because this is Ethiopia, Doc. The real Ethiopia. This is the East, not the West. These Ethiopians, as black as they are, this is what they're finding, Doc. These Ethiopians, Doc, as black as they are, Doc. Seeing that they are the sons and daughters of the first Adam. And brethren and sister of the last Adam. Are they talking Noah? Let's go. And the offspring of God. Hawa, Doc. Our breath of security, the fifth and sixth letter of the Hebrew is <gasps> Wa. A secure breath, Doc. They ought to be treated with respect, agreeable, since they are the seed of the Creator. They are the original people. The original people, Doc. Not Aboriginal. They're the originals, Doc. The copper color races, Doc. Just found here, Doc. By who? You, Doc. The European, your people. King James is good. This and this and this. But, Doc, I mean, you gotta. You know, ask yourself, are you the European? That's a whole other question, Doc. Let's get back to the story. Let's get back there because I want to make a good dismount. Let's go. Now that we know the kingdom of Jerusalem was just overthrown. And look right here. It says the kingdom of Jerusalem established 1100s. This is Preston John season. This is priest king season. Uh, and you see right under that Columbus born. Um, and so... Uh, you have that in that time frame up above uh, on this particular chart. Doc, these are just teachable moments. Let's get 634. We're going quickly. We're going to make a great dismount, Doc. Let's go. This is the uh, chart for 432, the drop radio. Let go. And this chart looks similar to the one for 1877, uh, but slightly different. So you see King James. Uh, one over to the right, and you also still see the uh, 1603 date. Uh, strangely enough, this book was uh, purportedly written prior to the other one, and the overthrow of Jerusalem is missing. So you can see Columbus born, John Huss again up there, uh, but that notation on this chart is actually missing in this book. And again, these are both hard copy books. So, yeah, I mean, they hijacked this version of it and they took out the, uh, you know, Kingdom of Jerusalem falling and they took out the Kingdom of Jerusalem established in 1100s. Let's go, man. 727, Doc, we're almost done. It's all good. These are teachable moments. Here you can see um, more closely, uh, more clearly with the, the drop radio uh, book, you can see where it shows King James 1 and 1603, and then you can see Charles 1 under that, and uh, 1625, it looks like. See, Doc, these are teachable moments, you know what I mean? You're using our drop, we're using some of your drop, we're having a good time, we're getting along, right? Let's go, 748. And here with the metamorphosing uh, one, you can see, uh, you know, a close up here also of King James 1 and uh, pointing out the 1603 date. Now, let's get some clarity here. It, clearly, it is understandable that someone would look at this. Um, it's talking about voyages and adventures. Um, and so it would be very easy for someone to look at the chart and misunderstand what that top part of the chart is about. And that 1603 date is not the date that King James came to America. That's uh, the date that he became king. Uh, that was the date of the uh, unification of the crowns, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. And you can see the date with Charles I that coincides also uh, with him uh, becoming uh, the monarch. Of Fine, Doc. Fine. It was the date of his unification. But how do you know that he didn't charter a voyage? Doc, were you there? Do you have any evidence to the contrary? Because... We're digging on an investigation and we take it very serious. So when we have drop showing this connection to these patents and to this voyage and discovery drop, are you saying that he has nothing to do with voyages and discovery? 
Now that doesn't make any sense, Doc. And I think you might be confused why they would put, you know, this marker here that has nothing to do with the actual context of voyages and discovery. But let's go, man. Eight. Now let's go to nine fifteen. Perfect. Internet edition uh, that you can see the kingdom of Jerusalem overthrown. Uh, you can see the book is uh, perhaps sort of falling apart there. Um, and you can also uh, make note of the King James uh, date of becoming uh, the monarch of the unified kingdom. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, you know, and what I like about what I like about this doc. <laughs> Nah, man, uh, you know, what I like about this is, again, it's showing the kingdom of Jerusalem established. All right, now the, their crusade is looking for the priest king, right? Who's over the kingdom of Jerusalem. And now where is it? Since America was still unknown, all these areas, right? So that's the crusades. That's the search. That's why the Portuguese are searching for Preston John. That's why we searching for Preston John. It's in our flow. It's in our ancient love song. We're not down with the excellent new tune, man. The kingdom of Jerusalem overthrown. Papal bull. Let's go. 945. We're almost there, Doc. And one of the interesting things is that it has these voyages and it has... Now this, again, is a good drop from the Doc. All right, so again, I give you your props when you make good points, Doc. Let's go. The, uh, the maps of the voyages between Europe, Africa, and America during this time frame. And oddly, it does not show uh, any voyages going from Africa to America. You can see circumnavigation. Oh, so we're talking voyages. And based on their routes, there's no voyages going directly from Africa to America? In the 1600s, 1500s? <laughs> all you got is this Columbus situation. and that, I mean, you know what I mean? So, but this is all coming from Spain and Europe. But what about directly from Africa? I thought they were picking up slaves from Africa and taking them here. But it's not uh, documented on their voyage and discoveries. Which is a body bag, Daniel, that they just found you here. The copper color races found here by the European, my Negro people. Navigation from Europe around Africa, but you do not see direct lines going into uh, the Americas. So it's a very odd dynamic. You see lots of movement between Europe and America. It's a very truthful dynamic, Doc. Great drop. Uh, you see um, movement uh, from Europe into uh, going around Africa, but you don't see that movement that you see in the slave ship database uh, of movement mm. going between Africa and the Americas mm. and Europe. Mm -hmm. And again, here you can see that. <laughs> Where's the slave ships? They just found us here, my people. From navigation, but uh, you don't see what would be the routes for the slave ships. Another interesting notation about this book is that it only makes, I think, about six notations regarding slavery in this, you know, huge book related to the uh, history of the early history of mm, America. Maybe you weren't slaves. Maybe you're prisoners of war. Maybe you weren't slaves taken captives from Africa. Maybe you were been fighting ever since. Chickamauga, Shawnee, Dragon Canoe, Hawata, Takamsa. America. And this gives you another look at uh, voyages and discoveries uh, from 986 to 1607. Again, you can see that circumnavigation uh, related to Africa. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Oh, 1135. So, as promised, we're going to look at what really happened in 1603, and again... Now, what really happened? See, this is what I'm talking about. So, since he didn't take this voyage, what really happened? Oh, he was coordinating. Oh, here's this union happening. Why couldn't he have a coronation, a union, and a voyage in the same year? Just because he was doing one thing means he can't do something else? Do you have that drop? Do you have them sources? 
And this is when that doc in front of your name, you know, gets a little out of control, doc. This is when we got to humble ourselves, doc. Because if you're saying he can't make a voyage because he had this coronation as king or this unit, this union going on, this is even more showing about this uh, necromancy, showing this confederacy, Psalms 83, against our people. This union is the confederacy, this union of crowns, Doc. You're just giving us more drop, more water. So don't say he can't make a voyage because he made a union. I mean... Our eyes are open, Doc. It's easy to make that mistake uh, because... Now we made a mistake because we are theorizing based on voyages and discovery timelines that James had something to do with a voyage or made a voyage. It's a mistake because of what, Doc? Of the way that chart was constructed. Um, but what has happened is, is a number of people have uh, taken this up with this belief that King James actually traveled to America and if belief that he traveled to America and doc what are you going to give us in the contrary that he didn't travel to America if you know anything about King James uh, historically he was not exactly the most trusting of kings and so the idea that he would actually get on a ship with a group of people uh, traveling for months to get to America it's a pretty much inconceivable that... Oh, it's inconceivable, Doc. Pretty much. You didn't say for sure. And if, if you're not certain, then you can't, you know, qualify your statements as being fact or say that we're making mistakes, Doc. One more time. Because, you know, we don't play here, Doc. This is actually what we do, you know? This is really what we do, Doc. To get on a ship with a group of people... Uh, traveling for months to get to America, it's a pretty much inconceivable. That it's inconceivable because he had social issues or he didn't trust. How do you know? You don't even know what he looked like. You don't know who the man trusted. You're speaking and making assumptions with a doctor in front of your name as if this is true, as if you got sources, personal, yeah, primary sources to know that he had social issues. If you know anything about King James... You don't, you don't know anything about King James. All you got is stories. All you got is opinions. You have no sources, Doc. I don't think you understand what people are, when, when people are telling you this, you're not seeing it. You can't dispute something without sources, Doc. Because he made a union doesn't mean he didn't make a voyage. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But what we do know is he put the patents down. For the voyages, Doc. And because he had issues with people, does it mean he didn't hop on a boat with people he did trust, Doc? You don't have anything to the contrary. You're just literally yapping out of your gums right now. And that's a big issue, Doc. But I love you, though much inconceivable that, that he would actually do that but clearly you can see how someone would you know make that mistake looking at but it's our mistake that chart and the way the chart is structured but what really happened in 1603 that was of note <coughs> um, in terms of that chart was the proclamation of the union and this was the union of the crowns and when king james was crowned uh, at this time, he actually unified a number of kingdoms. And so he was the rightful heir to the crown for, you know, Scotland and Ireland. Was he, Doc? Because love to the high con, we got the Scottish Arboroth. As long as there's a hundred of us left, Doc, would we'll never fall under English rule. So by 1603, were we intact? Or was this a hijack? England and at some point in time France was also you know a part of this whole dynamic and so that's what really happened in 1603 so it wasn't that he actually traveled here it was that he notice again she gives us no doc you ain't giving us nothing I love you but you ain't giving us nothing <laughs> but this this is what really happened this is what happened of note not that other malarkey about Colin she ain't even talking about what the video's about doc you ain't even talking about the video's about you ain't even talking about the colonization of these people here, of our families here. You're not even touching on the actual subject. You're just skimming over it to try to make a point, to try to wipe the ass of King James.
Oh, colonization, allegedly patents, allegedly voyage. Oh, no, he just got crowned king and made a great union. Doc, we see you clearly. And you got to choose up. You got to choose up, Doc. Let's get one more clip for the dispound. And again, we love you, Doc. This is a teachable moment. This is a teachable moment, Doc. It's all to the grave. It's all to the gravy. All to the gravy, Doc. We love you. One of the things just to uh, make note of is that, again, when uh, a monarch has been deposed or the dynasty has been deposed, there is often mm -hmm. a, a process of maligning the entire bloodline of that particular monarch. Because he's gone, we're just talking shit about him. No, Doc, we're tracing our family lineage and the wars tribally that went on. But let's get it. Mark. And, you know, depending on the depictions that you see of King James, sometimes his ethnicity uh, oh. appeared somewhat ambiguous. And so no, Doc. Sometimes his ethnicity. Oh, Doc, you want to talk ethnicity of, of, of King James? Doc, ambiguous only to the hijack, Doc. I see a black man. I see a so-called black man, Doc. What do you see? Doc, let's compare these these pictures right quick between our picture and Doc's picture. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Now, this little shit right here, Doc, excuse me, Doc, but this shit right here is clearly some iconic, iconoclastic, whitewashed image. Look at how fresh the paint is on it. Clearly, this is a hoax. This is bullshit. But you chose it because you thought it represented you, Doc. I know you're going to say no, but yes, you did. Because you called it ambiguous. Oh, his lips are a little full. But that's how it is in Scotland. Why? Because Scotland is all swarthy. These are Negroes in Scotland. These are Negroes in Ireland, Doc. When you talk Sweden, you're talking swarthy Negroes. When you're talking Germany, you're talking swarthy Negroes, Doc. Look, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you what Europe looked like. I'm telling you, Doc, what Europe looked like. And you can just easily research this for yourself. So no matter what we're talking about, we're talking about these Negro people. Scotland's complicated black history, Doc. Scotland's complicated black history. I mean, we have a creator that just kind of gives us body bags all day, Doc. That's the other thing about us. You know what I'm saying? But let's go. So you could see uh, in different pictures, different depictions, he has a slightly different phenotype of skin color. A slightly different phenotype. <laughs> Doc, man, you, you out of control. T uh, appeared somewhat ambiguous. And so you could see uh, in different pictures, different depictions, he has a slightly different phenotype. His skin color may look a little different. Um, his features may look a little different, and on here you can see that he has uh, very full lips and, um, you know... A full lips, like a Negro. Very olive skin tone. We know olive is black. And that would be consistent with many uh, individuals uh, from Scottish backgrounds. From where? And so, I know a number of... Doc, from where? It would be consistent of many individuals... From, I mean, Doc, we're just talking Scotland. We're just talking the Scotland's complicated black history, Doc. The phenotypes, the full lips. You can't dance around the truth when we're talking historical and cultural. And dance over that, oh yeah, but this, I know people try to make him black, but Shit, forget about that. I know people try to make him a, a colonizer, but nope. No, he, he's not. He can't be. He couldn't have gotten on that boat. The kingdoms were united that year. He couldn't have got on the boat. That's what you sound like, Doc, but you ain't giving us nothing. Pictions. He has a slightly different phenotype. His skin color may look a little different. Um, his features may look a little different. And on here you can see that he has uh, very full lips and... Um, you know, a very olive skin tone, and that would be consistent with many uh, individuals uh, from Scottish backgrounds. 
And so I know a number of people are really focused on, uh, you know, primary sources. They really want to see those primary sources. Oh, Doc, you got to give us something. Uh, one of the things to remember is that, again, you need to validate those primary sources. And primary no, Doc, you need to validate your dispute. You need to, Doc, you, you need to validate something that you're disputing, like King James couldn't have came over here in 1603. You need to validate that with something, Doc. Primary sources, what constitutes a primary source actually varies from discipline to discipline. And so what constitutes... Come on, man. We don't get into semantics, Doc. What, what validates it in law doesn't validate it here. Doc, give us something. But love to you. I know you try, and, and, and I do appreciate the, the Ahab. But like I said, I'm going to let my little homie ride on you. Six, 2016, drop. Let's go, man. <laughs> for the this English discoveries and settlements continued. It says the 10th of April, 1606. All right. So we just read 16. Yeah, shout out to my balcony service, man. We've been doing it from off the balcony. It's King James came, 1603. What does it say? The 10th of April, 1606 was full of fate in the destinies. <laughs> Destiny. Yeah. Of the Western continent. On that day, King James I issued two great patents, patents directed to men of his kingdom. So King James I, April 10th, 1606, issues direct patents directed to men of his kingdom, authorizing them to possess and colonize all that portion of North America lying between the 34th and 35th parallels of latitude. The immense tract thus embraced, embraced, extended from the mouth of Cape Fear River to Passamaquoddy Bay and western to the Pacific Ocean. The first patent was granted to an association of nobles, gentlemen, and merchants residing at London and called the London Company. While the second instrument was issued to a similar body which had been organized at Plymouth in southwestern England and which bore the name Plymouth Company, to the former corporation was assigned all the region between the 34th and 38th degrees of latitude and to the latter the tract extending from the 41st to the 45th degree, the narrow belt of these three degrees lying between the 38th and 41st parallels was to be equally open to the colonies of either company. See, so these are companies, corporations, corporations, corporations. This is the second world. You're the first world. This is what they're doing to the first world. They're putting corporations on you. Plymouth Company, London Company, the narrow belt of the three degrees line between the 38th and 41st parallels was to be equally open to the colonies of either company, but no settlement of one party was to be made within less than 100 miles of the nearest settlement of the other. See how they were Mapping out your land. You see why the government still got 770 million acres of your land in a trust right now? You see why the four corners are yours, why everything is yours? Bang. This is the proof. The nature and extent of these grants will be fully understood from our examination of the accompanying map. Only the London Company was successful under its charter in planting an American colony. So the London Company is the one that planted the American colony. The company is the London Company. The corporation is the London Company. The American colony is owned by the London Company. Bang. And this is their territory. It's all we talking about, Doc. The real spill. King James the first. Before he wrote your 1611 or put together or had it put together 1611 in 1603, what did he do? What the king do? What did King James do in 1603? Hmm? What did he do? He came here in 1603. And then what did he do? The 10th of April, 1606, was full of fate in the, de in the destinies of Western continent, of the Western continent. On that day, listen up, 
Here's the baby. Let's get it out the bathwater. On that day, King James I issued two great patents directed to men of his kingdom, Edomites. Mm. Hebrew Edomites. Mm. <laughs> Authorizing them to possess and colonize all that portion of North America lying between the 34th and 35th parallels of latitude. The immense tract thus embraced extended from the mouth of Cape Fear River to Passamaquoddy Bay in the western to the Pacific Ocean. King James I issued these patents and it authorized these mercenaries to possess and colonize. To possess and colonize. To possess and to colonize. Papal Bull. What did we just kick with the dumb diverses in 1452 Papal Bull? This was the Vatican, the Pope Nicholas V issuing his authority to the kings of Spain and Portugal. Batuca. But then now you got this authority also hitting on King James. And King James, with that authority from the dumb diverses, right, then extends his authority and issues two great patents in 1606 directed to the men of his kingdom, authorizing them to possess and colonize all that portion of North America. And you know the rest. Right. Hey. That's the drop. That's the drop. <laughs> so you got the drop right here. April 10th, 1606. King James issued two great patents directed to the men of his kingdom, not Israel. Authorizing his kingdom to possess you. Just like the dumb night verses says. So he's, he's acting with the authorization of the Pope. Nicholas V, Doom Diverses in 1452 to do what? Capture you, seek you out, vanquish, remove your movable goods, immovable goods, and put you in perpetual servitude. This is what he's doing, you know, with that same document of Batu Khan. So whether you're talking the Batu Khans and connecting that with Moab and then connecting this with Esau, you're still talking Psalms 83 Confederacy against the original copper color Amaru Khan, the Israelite, found right here in Judah, in Jerusalem, lying between 34th and 35th parallels of latitude, Doc, is it play play? That's when you recon it. That's when you research the London Company. That's when you research the Plymouth Company. And tell us this is play play, Doc, and, and tell it to us with sources next time, whether they're primary or not. We just surfing the wave. I love y'all, man. And like I said, man, hopefully we can have a couple minutes to get a natural by law. This my love to win a poikin, man. Love to uh Mavi 77, man. American Aboriginal population. Ab the legend. Love to you, man. Natural by laws keeps keeps on these giants neck bone. Let's get a couple minutes of this for the dismount. Subscribe to the bro natural by law. Cause it's a giant drop. Every single time. We're talking about the 100,000. Giant war. Neanderthal dot. That's a good place for you to research. Doc. Neanderthal dot. Now you see what we're dealing with dot. Now you see what we're dealing with. complex. So what's interesting is that the social organization of the Mississippian culture was based on warfare. And most of the imagery found on various artifacts connects to cosmology and supernatural beings. Mississippian culture reigned ranged from the Great Lakes to the Gulf Coast and along the Ohio River and into both the lowland and mountain areas of the southeast. And this culture is also known for the massive platform and burial mounds. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about Cahokia. So if you've watched my other video, Spiral Mounds, Mystery of the Mound Builders, you will know that skeletons of great size were found all across North America and mainly in the areas of the Ohio River Valley and down into the southeast. Now there are many articles that give evidence of these skeletons, but no actual skeletal remains are available for research today. Why is that? Now, some people speculate that they were sent to the Smithsonian and the Smithsonian dumped them somewhere in the ocean. Um, or they're locked away. Now, some people speculate that they were sent to the Smithsonian and the Smithsonian dumped them somewhere in the ocean. Um, 
or they're locked away in some, but no actual skeletal remains are available for research today. Why? And right quick, man, love to AD the truth seeker, my, my good bro, man, love to you, man, for the drop. Um, on the Dr. Tracy, you know what I mean? Love to you, Dr. Tracy. It's all Ahab. These are teachable moments at 432 The Drought Radio. What is that? Natural by law. Now, some people speculate that they were sent to the Smithsonian and the Smithsonian dumped them somewhere in the ocean. Um, huh. Or they're locked away in some giant warehouse somewhere. You know, we, we really don't know. But we do have articles and we have pictures of artifacts and pictures of skeletons and skulls. So we know, um, according to the Bible, that the Nephilim was in the land of Canaan, um, and it specifically talks about that um, if you will go and read like uh, Numbers 13, 33, um, and some other places on up, um, you know, David and Goliath. Um, and on past that, it specifically talks about Your belly flop. And it's interesting because in the uh, book of old, right, he kept referring to the Valley of the Giants or, you know, the Valley of the Nephilim. And right here, they're finding all of this in the so-called Ohio Valley. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to drop this link in the description. Cause I don't want to dig on it too much, you know what I'm saying? But, um, as you can see, right, the Ohio Valley. And this is where, you know, I don't know, just in that book of Og, if you go get part five, I'm telling you, if you own part five, then you, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. Because he kept mentioning the Valley of the Giants. Mm -hmm. Right, he was mentioning the Valley of the Giants. So, um, we're only digging on Ohio Valley, right? Ohio. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to leave this in the description box. And, um, we're going to go ahead and carry on. That's cool, Joe. Much of high. <laughs> Much of high, man. Y'all get that drop from Natural by Law. You can get it right. On the homepage, man, just uh, search Natural by Law, man, and get the drop. And yeah, man, A hop to all the great comments, man, um, that y'all dropping on here, man. J Hip, man, Yosef the Real, Quan Quan. We started from the bottom, now we're here. Swarthy everywhere. Much of high drop nation, the water for your energy, Kind drop. Allahuwa, I love to light hour, man. He'll be joining us in the ether soon. Go get his drop in the drop shop, man. Phoenix. Uh, his beautiful uh, wife, Phoenix, got some great, great uh, jewelry, different things. We got a 20%, I believe, uh, Drop Nation code when you click on it in the drop shop on 432thedrop.com. Love to share, man. So before I even watch, let me post my ish because when folks said this is the most important study vid to date, must be some real hidden jewels. Got a nigga extra high. Love what you and the brothers like you are doing. It's literally prophetic. Yeah, wow, 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 brother. Um, yeah, man. Um, I think it's a very important vid as well. This kingdom of Antion and the fact that others consider it important as well. I don't know if it's the most important study video today, but Drop Nation, we definitely are putting it together, together, man. So, hey, hi, bro. Hey, hi, Carla. He's talking about Rome. I'm talking about Rome too, Carla. Hey, hi, Joseph. You got more body bags than Hillary Clinton does. <laughs> I ain't going to get on that. But, hey, uh, man, I got you, man. Love the trifecta records. When you look up India, here is some of the search results. We just digging on it. The three Indias, sometimes include Ethiopia or the Americas. Love the trifecta. Brian McClure, love to you, bro. Body bag come, body bag. Drop Nation, let go. Press the John 41. Love to you, Cornelius. Love to you, Leela Gross. How many names they gonna give us copper folk, man? I'm trying to tell you. Preston John was found last night. Just ride the wave. Man, we just 